Hello, everyone. It's Mr. Colley. And today we're going to talk about the 1920s, the good times, the nine years of extreme economic growth, and the dangers and the consequences to this era. Now, prosperity was the theme of the 1920s, okay? The middle class bought on credit, many new convenience products available. The vacuum cleaner, the washing machine, the iron, stuff like that. Things that today we don't consider such in high demand, okay? But back then, that's, that's what Americans wanted. They, they, this was the latest and the greatest technology for the time. Now, I want to set the stage. Who's the president during this time period? Warren Harding. Okay, now our parents, grandparents, family members, they always tell us, watch who we hang out with, we're judged by the company we keep. This is a prime example of this being so true. Now, he gets elected saying that he's gonna return America to normal life. Okay, now his cabinet, the, the <clears throat> excuse me, his cabinet is called the Ohio Gang. Okay, now usually cabinet members are prestigious. Hamilton, Washington, you know, Jefferson. These are people, when we think of founding fathers, we think of people who are, you know, respected. Well, he made history, but for the wrong reasons. His cabinet members were the first cabinet members ever to sentence to federal prison. What did they do? Oil has always been a commodity that the world craves. So what did these cabinet members do? They discovered there was oil on federally owned land and they sold that, okay? They received over $300,000 in bribes and they got caught. Okay, now the 1920s, an extreme growing economy. The automobile became an accepted part of American life, okay? And what you have to understand is, during this time period, Americans are earning more than they ever have. They're working less and making more, more time to spend the money. As you see here, the world's higher standard of living. There's no way like the American way. Mass production. What is mass production? It's a large scale product manufacturing done by machinery. Okay, you're able to make more products available. You're able to lower the cost to the consumer. And this formula changed the entire American economy. Now, who is the father of mass production? Henry Ford. And on his assembly line, he divided operations into simple tasks that unskilled workers could do. For example, take a look at this picture. If you worked at this factory and your job was to put the tires on the car, you would do that day in and day out. Every day you would get more efficient at it, better at it. You would enjoy your work more because you're so good at it. And two, um, you would be able to produce more cars, okay? So in the long run, excuse me, in the long run, Ford's gonna benefit, you're gonna benefit, okay? It's gonna increase the efficiency on the factory floor. Now take a look at these, these uh, statistics. They're, they're, they're pretty impressive. In 1913, it took Ford 12 hours to make the car. By 1925, a car was coming off the assembly line every 10 seconds. Now look at the price. Let's compare prices for a second. In 1908, a Model T sold for $825. 1924, a Model T sold for $295. Better technology, many years later, mass production and the assembly line. As they perfected it, it lowers the cost to the American people. The social impact of the automobile. You have to understand that there's a lot of byproducts of the car. It, it, it brings you so much freedom, okay? Also, it created other businesses, okay? Garages, gas station, diners, okay? Hotels, because people are gonna travel now. Also, rural life connects with urban life and vice versa. So if you lived in the country, you're no longer isolated from city life. And if you live in the city, you're no longer isolated, okay? So it, it's bringing people together. Also, a new consumer and worker called the commuter is gonna move to the suburbs. So you don't have to work, you don't have to live where you work anymore. Okay, you don't have to live in the city. You could, you could live in the city and work upstate. You could live upstate, work in the city. That's called the commuter where you travel. 
Now here are some goods that people went to debt to buy. Now I know this is going to sound crazy today, but these are the things that people had to have, and this was considered the latest and the greatest. Electric razors, frozen foods, electric iron, vacuum cleaners, washing machines, refrigerators. Today, they're not luxuries, they're necessities, okay? Um, you don't, you don't uh, aspire to own a nice iron. Like, you, you know, when we look at Amazon, I doubt and search you're looking for is an iron or a vacuum cleaner, okay? And if you do, you buy it once and then you replace it when it breaks. It's not like a cell phone where we have to have the latest and the greatest and, you know, laptops and TV, stuff like that. And I'm sure when people are studying our time period, they'll laugh that we went to debt to buy those things. Now, consumer society, okay? Because of higher wages and shorter days, Americans have an increased buying power, okay? So America's become consumers and we have not stopped since. We are a consumer nation. Now, buy now, pay later. I'm sure we're all familiar with buying on credit. I was told a long time ago by my dad and made a lot of sense now, not then. I wish it made more sense then. back then. I would, have, I would have made so many mistakes growing up, uh, but I learned from him. Here's what he told me, and it, and it makes sense now. I hope you could make sense to you. When you use a credit card, you're basically 99% of the time buying something you don't need with money you don't have. Let me repeat that. When you buy something on credit, 99% of the time you do that, you're buying something you don't need with money you don't have. If you could have that mindset, you will never get into credit card trouble. Okay, so because of easy consumer credit, many racked up debt to buy the family car, the radio, the furniture, the washing machine, and the vacuum cleaner. Now, this is basically setting the stage for the Great Depression. You can't buy things on credit for nine years and not have any consequences for it. Okay, so basically this sets the stage for the Great Depression because this roaring 20s, this economic boom, is kind of a false sense of hope because people were buying these goods on credit. So it wasn't their money they were buying it with, okay? So I hope this presentation was helpful. It will be followed with questions. If you have questions, you know I'm only a message away. Have a great day. Be safe. Stay well. Social distancing. We're almost through this, guys. We got this.